Okay, greetings everyone from the Yukon Territory, Canada, where it's very early in the morning. It's just after 5 a.m. My name is Lisa Christensen, and I'm a Sustainable Tourism Research Analyst with the Government of Yukon, one of our destination management organizations active in the Yukon Territory. Before I continue, can I just make sure everyone can hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. So about three weeks ago, a conversation transpired between myself, one of my coworkers, Sarah Marsh, two colleagues from the Observatory of South Tyrol, Italy, and Dirk with INSTO. And together we spoke about how to approach measuring public health as an issue area, as uh, I'm sure many of you have experienced um, the wish to begin monitoring this, this area within your observatories, uh, given the situation we have now with the global pandemic. Our conversation led to an invitation by Dirk to share our approaches. And so thank you to Dirk for, for the invitation to do that. Um, I'll begin today by talking about the Yukon's approach to measuring public health. This is very new for us. This experience is very much underway. Uh, so I'll share our experiences to date and then Felix Windiger will share South Tyrol's experience. So for those of you unfamiliar with the Yukon Territory, it sits in the far northwestern corner of Canada. And it is, it is quite a large area. It's about the size of Spain. Um, it's large in size, but fairly small population-wise. We have 42,000 people living in the Yukon Territory, including individuals from our 14 First Nations communities. And in 2019, the Yukon was host to about uh, 500,000 visitors. And some of the things that attract people to the Yukon include our wilderness and wildlife attractions, um, the midnight sun, northern lights, um, historic sites, culture, museums, festivals and events, and our Klondike Gold Rush history, among other things. The two pictures you see on the screen here, one comes from one of our park areas popular for camping and hiking, and the other comes from one of our First Nations cultural festivals called Adaka, which happens every year in June. Just a quick overview, um, you'll recognize the INSTO mandatory monitoring areas in the blue boxes on the screen. Uh, our proposed issue areas for monitoring are shown in the purple boxes on the screen. We're not yet an INSTO member. Our application is underway and we are hoping to be a member by March uh, 2021. Um, so health and safety appeared on our radar this summer as I'm sure it did for many of you with the global pandemic. And through a few conversations we had with both local and international colleagues, we, um, we have an approach that, that um, that we'd like to implement in terms of how to go about measuring this issue area. So again, it is very much uh, a process underway. Um, so I'll share, I'll share our, our approach here. So the first thing we realized that was very important to do was to determine the monitoring objective with public health. Um, for us, this is a yet to, uh, we, we need to discuss the monitoring objective with our local working group. Um, but we know based on our work to date that a very important component of our monitoring objective will be to include um, visitor and resident health and safety. Because as we know, until visitors feel safe to travel and until residents feel welcoming to, um, to visitors coming to their communities, um, the sector, can't recover until we get to that point. So uh, the second thing we plan to do is to identify a range of possible indicators. Um, we do have a few possibilities at the moment. Um, one of the first places we looked to for generating this list was local actions, policy, and research. 
An indicator here I think many of you can relate to is the presence of both destination and operator level health and hygiene standards. Another consideration for us is the local travel climate. As we all know, resident sentiments toward visitors in many destinations is poor at the moment due to COVID-19. If we are knowledgeable about and can implement public health and safety measures that enhance resident sentiments towards visitors, we can help the sector recover. We also look to the Global Sustainable Tourism Council criteria for destinations, sections A11 and B7. Both contain indicators relevant to public health and safety. I've selected one to share with you on the screen here, which is that the needs of visitors and residents are identified and addressed in the delivery of security and health services. Carrying on down our list, um, the UNWTO recently produced two documents shown on the screen here that recommend lines of action for destinations to take to help facilitate responsible recovery of the sector. These actions are quite relevant for indicator development. Uh, one recommendation, for example, is for destinations to integrate epidemiological indicators in tourism. So for example, the number of hospital beds available to both residents and visitors, the ability to contain and identify infectious diseases. We've actually begun conversations with one of our territorial epidemiologists to um, talk about appropriate and suitable epidemiological indicators uh, we could use in the Yukon. And she has advanced our cause by taking these conversations to her public health team. So we're very much looking forward to hearing back from her. Another recommendation is for destinations to develop robust cleaning and sanitization procedures that encourage the adoption of reuse models. One last indicator possibility to share with you is uh, the availability of local activities that promote health and well being. So, this indicator, all of these indicators are, are basically defining um, what public health is for us. Uh, the last thing we'd like to do is to make sure we include indicators that foster readiness to react or transform in our list. If we think about emergency responses in a destination, for example, not only do we need to have a plan in place, emergency responses must be actively practiced on a regular basis to ensure a swift and successful response when it counts. So now with these basic, um, basic ideas around how to approach Pub monitoring public health, uh, we do plan to move these things forward. Um, so this slide just shows you a summary of um, what we plan to do. So first on that list is determine the monitoring objective. As I mentioned earlier, this will be discussed with our local working group. Um, for us, it will also be very important to include our communities and First Nations communities in these discussions so that we, uh, we ensure our indicators reflect a the variety of ways that public health is um, understood. We do already have a start on a list of possible indicators, but again, this will need further development once our monitoring objective is, is determined. Once we do have this list compiled, we plan to ask our colleagues and other observatories for feedback. So, if any observatories have feedback on our approach um, as it is in its current state, I do invite you to contact us. Um, we're very much open to your ideas and feedback. Following that, we will integrate the indicator indicators into our framework for the Yukon, which will be part of our application that we submit in March. And so that, that is it for me. I will now turn it over to Felix to continue this presentation. And I will continue running the slides for you, Felix. Just let me know when to move to the next one, please. <laughs> 